what is going on guys in this video i'm going to share you what courses i took as a neuroscience major it's going to be a different video it's going to be an experience based video and so hopefully people who are going into college maybe i could convince you into going into neuroscience compared to a major like biology but it's obviously up to you at the end of the day but neuroscience is superior than biology that's what i think so in this video i'm just going to share you what courses i took as a neuroscience major at university of scranton the reason why i'm giving you their university is because you can look at the curriculum online simply by going on the university of scranton's website hopefully you will find all the information there but this is my personal experience and so I will be sharing all the courses I took in this video. So let's just get started, all right? I'm just gonna share my screen here. I have a webcam right here. So the first course I took, well, let's just start with all the, all the backhand stuff, all the prerequisites, right? So in order to take the main neuroscience courses, you have to complete biology and biology lab and it's biology one and two along with that you'll also have to take chemistry uh and yes i did take chemistry it's somewhere up here but just let's just focus on uh, neuroscience right yes you have to take biology you have to get those requirements out of the way and so that was so two semesters right along with the labs all right now you at my university it was it was like taking uh these these seminar type courses, where in this first one, as you can see, uh, neuroscience lab rotations, we had to just attend this an hour a week. Different professors in the biology and neuroscience department would give lectures on, on interesting things, right? So uh, there was this one professor who, who explained what he did with ants uh, in his research. Other, the, uh, the other professor explained what zebrafish and and then and its behavior and all the research that he did and so it was just different professors presenting on different topics and that was half credit which was really nice it was no pro i if i recall there was probably no homework the second one the second seminar which you take in semester two is neuroscience intro research seminar and it, it, this is more of like reading research papers and also uh presenting uh whenever possible like i feel like i had if i recall it's like way back like two years ago um and it was um you have to present like at least three times per semester and you'll basically present on a research article so my school was really heavy i don't know about other schools i assuming i'm, I'm assuming that neuroscience is a very research-based major and so you had to read a lo lot of research articles now you can say oh i don't like research articles but if you are passionate about neuroscience you will find amazing information from research articles uh one of the most amazing research articles we have read in that class was about how uh, our brain looks like when you look at a black person versus white person so it basically that research paper defined if racism is true or not like what kind of instincts we have when we look at colored persons and so that was really interesting to me how your brain could react to a face just because of color and it was really interesting like it's neuroscience is really applicable to the real world you may you may not think you may not think that way but it, it does really apply to uh, a lot of the things right now that's going on in the world moving on to the next course is behavioral neuroscience okay so behavioral neuroscience i actually have some notes here so we'll go uh into i think it was fall 2020 behavioral neuroscience okay so behavioral neuroscience is exactly what you hear behavior and neuroscience and how how um the brain produces behavior specifically so i'll just take you through this this is one of the best courses i've taken in my life i can say that because we learned everything um 
So this was the chapter one, right? Like basic questions. Uh, what is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity is the ability for ability of the nervous system to change uh, from the environmental or maybe genetic responses. All right. What study has shown that socialization induces neuroplasticity, right? So, so like kind of really interesting stuff, how behavior affects neuroplasticity. And, and we also learned about anatomy, right? So brain and the nervous system, what, what we have in our brain. Uh, we also learn about that. We learn about neurons. We learn about glial cells, divisions of the nervous system, cranial nerves. Oh, this is amazing. Like neuroanatomy is one of the amazing anatomies that you can learn. Spinal cord. So amazing, amazing information. You'll learn about a lot of things. Development of a brain. Like there's six important steps when a brain is developing. Okay. I don't remember it off the top of my head because it's been a long time. But yeah, so you learn a lot from this course. You learn about nervous system physiology. You learn about how neurons work, action potentials, uh, membrane potentials. This is all physiology and neurophysiology. If you have taken general physiology in your life, you will know what this is, right? Action potentials, uh, electrical properties of neurons, how neurons communicate. And so you will learn about that, how your brain cells communicate with other brain cells via electrical communication, action potentials. You'll learn about sodium and potassium, the role of sodium and potassium and how they, they influence action potentials. It's physiology, it's anatomy, it's chemistry of behavior. You'll learn about dopamine, neurotransmitters. You learn about different pathways. I still refer to these notes when I'm sometimes making my YouTube videos. I still have these notes so that I can make or refer to this information while I'm making videos. And so amazing stuff. Like you'll learn about the dopaminergic pathways in the brain. Uh, how cool is that? Serotonergic pathways, okay? How many, 14 types of receptors. Receptors are magic. There's nothing that special about neurotransmitters. What's special is their receptors. You'll, you'll learn about that, okay? You'll also learn about how morphine um, works. You'll also learn about drugs, uh, pharmacokinetics, how drugs work and how ad addiction occurs, okay? You'll learn about that. Very interesting stuff. Cocaine is the highest lever pressing reward motivation, right? So when you give rats cocaine, they will become addicted because there's a high release of dopamine and then there's a down regulation. I'm just... It's just so rewarding to think about my past courses because I had so much fun learning about these. I'm a big nerd, but I, I don't really uh, mind sharing this information online. And yeah, so you'll learn about hormones in brain. Yeah, it's a steroid function, right? How steroids can go into the cells and affect your DNA, right? Because they're lipid, uh, they're, they're lipophilic. Um, and then if they're protein, they'll attach to a receptor. So all the very, very interesting stuff. And by the way, this, this app is called Notion. This is where I take or took my notes during my undergrad. And so it's been a really helpful uh, note-taking app. Now you can argue that handwritten notes are better, but I feel like this has worked for me. Um, I'll make a separate video on how to study better. But that was a side note. You'll learn about sensory processing, how... Uh, your eyes take in information. And then you learn about vision, emotion, aggression, uh, learning and memory. Oh, this is all the basic stuff. But the next course is really interesting, I think. So let's just talk about the next course. This was the course where I changed my major to neuroscience. This, this course uh, just helped me learn so many different things. That course gave me a really deep understanding of how your brain works. I don't have my notes on Notion, unfortunately, because I took it as a sophomore. I took it really early in my journey. I was a biochemistry major. I was like a BCMB major. You can look it up for the BCMB majors. It's like biochemistry, cell and molecular. And so I had to choose one course and I stuck with cellular and molecular neurobiology because I knew nothing about a brain. I knew, I knew nothing about how neurons worked. Like I, I, I didn't know about brain cells. Like I had no clue. 
I was the only sophomore in class. And this course truly changed my life. Uh, you go into deep properties of the brain cells, like how they actually work. You learn about action potentials. You also learn about conductance, like some like these mathematical properties, engineering principles, right? Some, 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 but not all. You also learn about nervous system physiology. Okay, let's let me recall my memory. What can I recall? So, what do we have here? Oh, yeah, we learn about learning and memory. Okay. Uh, it's coming back now. So we learn about learning and memory uh, and how we have the ability to uh, store different memories. It's like how we store short-term memories and how we store long-term memories. And what's the initiation? Like what kind of creates this pathway of storing memory? And what happens in long-term memory is you're forming synapses. Synapses are like, little finger-like projections coming off of a single neur neuronal cell. So then you pull up a picture of neuron. So what you have is you have this, right? You have, this is a neuron, the wire-like projections of a long axon, but you have synaptic terminals. Now in long-term memory storage, the initiation occurs from the nucleus. It's a cell. So it's a nucleus here and what happens is it's it sends uh, it it it's genetically impacted to create new synapses at the end so it grows like it grows a synapse like let's say here like it, it grows a synapse and connects to this new cell okay so that's how long term potential long that is, formal word is long term potentiation but this is how the initiation occurs like we grow, we don't grow neurons, we grow connections. And that's how you store memories long-term. So learning and memory. Other thing was um, how, uh, so, mo so molecular stuff, how acetylcholine has two types of receptors. It has a ionotropic receptor, which is controlled by ions, but also a metabotropic receptor. I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm, saying the words correctly especially the second one but that's more of a g protein coupled receptor meaning it, it, there's acetylcholine binds to receptor and then there's a signaling cascade okay now this might be a really heavy terms for some people i apologize but you learn about molecular stuff too you learn about uh different neurotransmitters like gaba and glyce uh gaba um gaba is a uh inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter. We learn about that. We learn about its receptors. Like you, you learn about different neurotransmitters and it and its receptors. Okay. So here you'll see like how it's synthesized. You learn about how a particular signal is, um, how a neurotransmitter is released. So how this this GABA releases and uh, influences a receptor on a postsynaptic neuron or basically a communicating cell. Um, and so you will learn about all these uh, mechanisms, signaling mechanisms, how, how neurons communicate, okay? All right, so that was cellular molecular neurobiology. Very, it's fall 2019, it's been a long time, but I still remember bits and pieces of it. And then these are senior courses and, uh, these in these courses, so Neuro 490 and Neuro 491 in our university was an alternative to doing like doing act, actual research, and so I took that option because I wanted to go into uh, medicine and healthcare. Uh, but if I was going to like a PhD for neuroscience, I would probably not take these and do the actual research. But since I was going into or like a healthcare. Uh, industry, right? That's why I, I uh, took these. It, that doesn't mean you don't do research. You, you do research, but you don't actually conduct, like you don't actually have hands-on research experience. You still do research and still you, you do research, uh, you write research papers. And so in the first one, it, the, the Neuro 490 segment, it was just presenting in front of the class three times 
a semester presentation, pretty basic, but you really learn how to speak. You really learn how to present information. More, most importantly, you really learn how to present neuroscience related information. In Neuro 491, we had to write a research proposal. So when, when researchers actually try to conduct research, they have to write a research proposal. That is basically a long sided, re properly researched research paper that you present to the basically my professor in this case, and it would be your research topic. So my research topic, I should remember this, was how testosterone and estrogen can influence food addiction in rats. This is all hypothetical. Research proposal, writing research proposals, all hypothetical. So you have to create your own research project and create a research proposal. You kind of get a grade for that, but you're not actually doing the research if you, if you know what I mean. So that is the process of research proposal. A lot of research because you have to actually do research. Uh, for example, in order to know how testosterone and estrogen may have an influence on food addiction in rats, I had to research if that was previously done on some other organism. For example, it wasn't done in food addiction studies. Testosterone and estrogen weren't used for food addiction, for reducing food addiction in rats. But what I found was in doing a lot of hefty research, I found was progesterone and testosterone administered together reduced cocaine self-administration in, in rhesus monkeys, okay? So if I just, just drone and testosterone, uh, cocaine administration. Right, so th this one, bang. This is what I found after doing research like this. So you have to fi find like, so you have to do research and then put up put, put forth a research proposal. I can only remember this because it was really recent. So yeah, this is the research paper. And so you have to go through the research paper. This is what when I done when I was a senior. So don't be discouraged because you will learn the process of reading research papers, analyzing data, properly. And moving on to that, we'll talk about statistics in behavioral neuroscience. You'll learn about a lot of different things, a lot of statistical things. You'll learn the significance of p-value, which is one of the most critical uses in data analysis. So p-value, you learn about basically how to analyze data. You had to take psychology. Oh, okay. And then two more courses that I have to really highlight here. First is functional neuroanatomy. I have notes. It's just neuro, uh, the anatomy of the brain, okay? This is all um, anatomy of the brain. It was spring 2021. All anatomy of the brain. Very clinical. The professor told us that he taught this at one of the medical schools. It, this, is, this information is legit. The meningeal coverings, ventricles, blood supply, where the blood comes from in your brain, strokes. Okay, very clinical stuff, very important, uh, very interesting. So clinic, clinical section or questions, right? So patient X has a thrombus in the middle cerebral, cerebral artery. What influence, if any, will this possibly have on motor activity? So it has a blockage in the middle cerebral, cerebral artery. I can't say that word. What would the patient present if there is an effect? Uh, what influence possibly? So actually, honestly, I uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, it's you have to really uh, be really in touch with this information, and there is no motivation right now as I'm in my gap year to uh, review this information, but I should. But so MCA supplies blood laterally. So basically upper motor neuron damage to lateral parts of the brain, frontal and parietal lobe, impairment of motor activity of the face and arms. Okay. So how your brain is structured, right? So if you cut the brain in half and you look at the middle, the midline portions, the, the portions of the brain that you could see and on the top, the top cort cortical part will have all the uh, projections that go to your legs. 
but the lateral part, so the side, the, the sides will go to your face and the arms. And so I think that's why there's impairment of motor activity of face and arms. Hyperreflexia, an increased deep tendon reflexes, spastic paralysis, increased muscle tone. So, where, so upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron. So there are two, uh, this is all neuroanatomy. I, I, I don't feel like I have to get into this, but it's just me uh, trying to explain stuff the best way possible. But when there's a loss of upper motor neuron due to a stroke in the nervous system and basically in the brain, there's increased muscle tone, like increased tone of the muscles, inability to control reflexes. So here I have a short diagram here. So uh, lateral, pre and post. Yep. So ventral portion of the medulla, bilateral, dorsal medulla. Okay. Interesting stuff. So yeah, amazing, amazing course. All the pathways in your brain are on in its spinal cord. Okay. This is the spinal cord. Okay. This is the spinal cord. All the pathways, they go up and down your, your spinal cord. Spinal cord injuries, big thing in uh, medicine and clinical stuff. Regeneration and injury. Like this is highly critical because people who have uh, trauma, there is no regeneration in the central nervous system. There is some regeneration in the peripheral nervous system. However, there is little to no uh, regeneration in the spinal cord. But people are still researching. Um, as of now, it's no, but maybe in a few years, might be yes. So yeah, that was functional neuroanatomy. And then you have to take psychology courses, social psychology, they have normal psychology. And lastly, biggest course I have taken. It was so, so time consuming and it was it learned I learned so much, but it was really, really critical. Uh, and that course is. If I find it was one of the recent courses, I graduated with this course, Neuroscience Research Methods. It's a four credit course. It's a highly research dependent course. Okay, so you have to basically write research papers uh, in Neuroscience Research Methods. I still have the folders. You have to create your graphs. Okay, this was my graph for my final research project. This was the... Uh, what is it? Tyrosine hydroxylase, mRNA expression, tyrosine, it makes dopamine. So tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme makes dopamine. And so there was no significant, dif significant difference between the alcohol trained ants and the non-trained ants. So yeah, that was a bummer, but uh, hey, we are past that. We had to do so interesting things. We had to start. We started off our semester with analyzing crayfish fights. So we had to like score the fights between two crayfish. It was really interesting. Okay, and we also had to uh, what's it called? So, um, after we did the fights, we had to uh, figure out with the data which crayfish would win in a in a future fight. So like one of our predictions was from the data we got that crayfish who have larger claws have the higher ability to win. Now that was all the basic stuff. Then we went into different like methods in neuroscience. We went into how to do behavioral scoring. We had, we, uh, we went into immunohistochemistry, which is uh, staining of the brain with uh, the chemicals. So if and th that loaded, okay. So the weight, mean weight, okay. So th this th this is what we had to create for those crayfish whites, like data. Uh, we had to take data and then put it into figures. That was really really key in this uh, experiment or in this uh, in this course. So this is one of my report, I think. So yeah, this was this is a journal of neuroscience format, and so this this course really wraps up the the major. Because this is a report that you would write in that course. You had to just write, cite you know, all the sections, figures, see all the color, colorful, beautiful figures uh, you had to do. And then you had to mention figure legends, tables, and all that good stuff that you do in research. I think this was really fun. I don't know about other people in my classes. But this was really fun to me. And so, yeah, this is what you do.
And then lastly, you create your own final project. You actually do research in that class. So you you have to, and if you if you're in neuroscience, you will have to do research. And if you're passionate about, so I was passionate about addictions. So I did um, alcohol addiction on, on ants. I unfortunately wasn't able to addict ants with alcohol, but I did learn something. Okay, I did, did I did do data analysis. I did do behavioral analysis. I also did uh, biochemical analysis, like measuring the amount of dopamine. And so it was all fun stuff. Yes, and that was it. That is my experience as a neuroscience major at University of Scranton. The, it was a great experience. Uh, I learned a lot and I want to learn more about neuroscience. So I just try to read more books about neuroscience and just engage with the topics. And so that is it for the video. If you like this video, click like. If you want to leave any questions, comments section, you know, you know the drill. So yeah, if you like this kind of content, please, please, please hit subscribe to this channel because I am trying to post more of experience type videos along with scientific videos, health and self-improvement. This is my dog back there barking at me because I'm just rambling on, but this is it. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.